Welcome back to Switzer on Australia's business channel. Our investments are being challenged at present due to heightened asset class volatility and the possibility of a Grexit and the pending rate rise by the Federal Reserve. Locally, there's been a lot of positive data around from employment to GDP, business confidence and retail sales. So how should you be investing at the moment? Our next guest is one of Australia's most respected money managers. He's shared it here to share his views on the economy, markets and how he's investing. Here's Anton Tagliaferro from Investors Mutual. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Marty. So, a lot of macro headwinds that we're dealing with at the moment from you know, the Grexit, Fed, rising bond yields. What's your position on the global economy and financial markets right now? Look, it's, it's very difficult. There's a lot of noise, a lot of volatility. I think we try to, as much as we can, ignore all that because it is, um, you know, changes from week to week. And, uh, you know, the Greek thing, I think, probably will get rolled over or whatever at some point. The debt will get rolled over. But, um, look, so we try to ignore a lot of that noise. Yeah. And we just try and focus on stocks, you know. So I, I, th I think we've said this for a long time. If you look around the world, uh, the U.S. is sort of recovering, but it's not a rapid recovery. Yeah. Uh, Europe's got its own issues, you know, and they'll be there for a long time. Uh, China's slowing, you know, Australia, we're slowing. So when you look at the economic picture around the world, things are slow. Mm and they will stay for a while, mm. I think, uh, which means interest rates will stay low for a while. I don't think there's any doubt about that, that mm. uh, people talking about even the Fed putting up rates. It, you know, they've got to do it very, very carefully, I think, because, yeah. you know, it's taken a lot to get the world at this, to this point of sort of stability, if you like. Mm. And I think the last thing the Fed would want to do is jeopardise, you know, what's been a very carefully constructed recovery. Mm. So what's your view on, on, on our market? Do you think we've found a, a bottom now? And what are the drivers that, I guess, can take it to that next level? Look, again, when you look at our market, there's, there, again, a lot of different... Um, different things affecting it. Obviously, lower commodity prices are, are going to have an impact on the resource sector for a while. I don't think we should expect a, very, a quick recovery in the resource sector. And in fact, all the oversupply coming on stream means it's going to be, I think, subdued for a long time. Yeah. You know, the banks have got their own issues in terms of, you know, raising capital yep. uh, for all the new regulatory stuff. So Westpac uh, do that yesterday? You well, know, Westpac selling out of BT, underwriting their DRP, NAB having a rights issue, you know, all those things. So the banks have to raise capital, yep. uh, which obviously means it's going to impact their earnings per share growth, their dividends won't grow as they have in yep. the past. Uh, and then you look at the rest of the market and you look, every company we talk to, you know, growth is hard to come by. There's no doubt the economies are, are slow, you know. And cost out, cost out sort of play? Cost out. Well, there's this, what we've been looking at the last few years, you know, companies that we think can grow of their own steam. Yeah. So companies that can make accretive acquisitions that make sense, companies which are restructuring, you know, like Caltex, GWA, uh, companies which have got growth locked in, like Shopping Centres Australia with, with leases to Woolworths. That's sort of where we're looking. We're not mm. buying things on the expectation. As you said, cost out is another area, you know. Um, uh, uh, Creative acquisitions, packed group is one we are, and a packaging yep. company made yep. an acquisition today. Yeah. You know, so th well. those are the sort of things you've got to look look at, I think, because yep. it's 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 very hard to generate earnings growth. So you talked about um, low interest rates, and um, I know you've been a, a big fan of, of of yield stocks over a number of years. Forever, forever. What's your view, view on the yield story? Does it have further to run now? Look, uh, uh, this sort of yield story doesn't have further to run. I, I think. Um, Look, yield stocks, there'll always be a demand for them at a certain yield, you know, a good quality, sustainable income, you know, the, I've been doing uh, investing in shares for 30 years and dividend yield is always an important thing. Why? And look, uh, three main reasons, you know, number one, you know, if you're buying a stock on a yield of five or six, as long as that yield is sustainable, you know you're going to get that five or six. You know? yep. uh, that also means, by the way, that in the case of a market fall, so if the market drops 10% in the next 12 months, it means a, yield, a stock on a yield of six, you'll lose 4%. You know, you'll, you'll lose 10% of your capital, you'll earn six. So your, your downside is sort of buffered a bit by the, um, by the yield. Also, you know, often when you get bear markets, I'm not saying there's one around the corner, but when, when markets start to fall, you know, the yield does provide a bit of a safety net, you know, uh, around a stock. Because, yeah. you know, a stock, if, it's, if you're buying it on a yield of 6% today, 
you know, it may drop to 7%, but how far is it going to drop before there's buyers, you know, for that sort of yield? What yield stocks do you like at the moment? Uh, look, uh, it's, it's, it's tough, uh, but as I said, it's companies where we have those uh, which are making accretive acquisitions. So, you know, we've been buying the likes of things like Steadfast, yep. which has been trying to consolidate the insurance broking industry. Yes. Pact Group, which is making accretive acquisitions in the... It's a busy uh, um, ele um, it's, it's the son-in-law of uh, Dick Pratt, yep. the late Dick Pratt, uh, you know, Rafi Jaminda, and he's yep. a very experienced team, in, and they've got a, a niche in uh, rigid plastics, you know. Not very well liked by the market, but that's fine. We, we, we know them well. It, it's a good, good, solid company. Not spectacular, good, solid company, making accretive acquisitions. Uh, we like companies that are restructuring their operations. So companies like Caltex, you know, which have sold their Canel refinery, though that, that's done well. Mm. GWA, which is selling uh, loss-making businesses. Companies that um, have locked in growth, so some of these utility companies, Osnet, yep. uh, which is on a 6% yield yeah. and a payout ratio of 50%. Uh, you know, with sort of uh, regulated returns, mm. spark infrastructure on a 6% yield, you know, no, nothing wrong with that. Mm. So in terms of value plays, um, Woolworths has obviously um, had a change of management today, yep. uh, another earnings um, uh, downgrade. Yep. Uh, all-time high for Woolworths is about 38 bucks. Uh, yep. It's about 30% off all-time highs now. What are your thoughts on that as an investment? Look, uh at, we have a holding, we have reduced it at, at higher levels. Um, look, I think the jury's out as to whether it can be turned around or not. Uh, I mean, today's announcement, obviously, with a change of MD, may be viewed positively, but I guess it sort of adds to the uncertainty as well. Yeah. Uh, the truth is, I think it's going to take it's going to take time. You know, it's, it, this is not a quick fix. It, it's a 40 billion turnover company. You know, I don't know how many tens of thousands of employees, and, and the reality is that the the supermarket uh, landscape has changed. I mean, if you go back five or six years ago, you know, Coles was a, a bit of a basket case. Aldi wasn't that, that, that um, widespread. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at it today, you know, you Coles... Like little possibly coming in the market Little the as UK. well, Costco, whatever, but those are relatively small at this stage, but even on just what you know today, you know, so, so it, it, the, the landscape has changed. The question is, um, you know, they've, they've put some strategies in place, Woolworths are ready to try and reverse some of those trends. Again, they're not coming through yet, but it's early days, you know, these things can't, they're not going to change, uh, you know, a company the size of Woolworths in one quarter, and they're going to get a new MD and he's going to come in with whatever strategy he takes. So look, they may turn it around, the jury's out, it uh, but it's going to take some time. And so I think, you know, we'll probably look to buy it on weakness, but I think there's time. Anton, thanks for your time. Pleasure. Thanks, Marty.